Hi everyone, I wanted to get to this story. This happened just before Christmas, but with the switch over to the new gear and the new setup, um, I never got round to actually doing the, the story, but it's important, so I wanted to cover it. Because Amber Rudd has actually been in front of a committee just before Christmas, just before they broke up for the Christmas break, and she's been defending zero hours contracts. So I wanted to go, go to this. She was talking in a meeting. By the way, Amber Wood, as the Department of Work and Pension Secretary, is like employing the McCanns as your babysitter. She's a truly awful person who has no compassion, who has no empathy whatsoever, which are the two qualities that you need as Department of Work and Pension Secretary, really. And she's devoid of both of them, as she's proven with her track record. And she replaced Esther McVeigh, who was equally as bad. <sighs> Rant over. Let's get to this video. And I would argue that many of the people in zero are now in zero are contracts. And a, a, an impact of the department's decision is to sanction people under universal credit if they refuse a zero hour contract job. But if they're on legacy benefits, they wouldn't be sanctioned if they're. So what he's saying there, and she's, she's obviously addressing this committee just before Christmas, what he's saying is, those on universal credit, if they are offered a job which has zero hours contracts, so no benefits, no guarantee of work, no guarantee of full-time work, no guarantee of hours per week, treated like slaves, if they refuse those while they're on universal credit, they are actually sanctioned. If you refuse that, you could be offered a job, I don't know, cleaning toilets on a zero hours contract, which might be, benefit to, what might be beneficial to somebody because of their home life. But to most people who are looking for a full time, steady job and obviously job security, zero hours is a no no. But if they, on universal credit, refuse a zero hours contract offer, they are sanctioned. However, if they are one of the majority of the country who still get legacy benefits, so still get job seekers allowance, etc., and they refuse a zero hours contract, they're not sanctioned. Now, I'm sure you'll agree that is wrong. Amber Wood doesn't think so. Refused a zero hour contract job. Go into work. I mean, the whole the principle of sanctions is that there is a conditionality, yeah. and that that we are that. Our contracts. Is that what you're seriously telling us, Well, I would should, say be, I would say yes. If people are offered work, they should take it. No matter what that word of work is, Amber. Really? No matter what that work is, and what that work pays, and what the what is on offer in that package. Really? Because that is dangerous. If it's a zero hour contract, if it's insecure work. Well, yeah, because the whole point about. I beg your pardon? It is prostitution. Because that's, that is the reality for some of the people directly affected. We've had that yeah, example here. He's, br he's brought up prostitution here. How some people have been refused zero hours, hours contract, had their benefits sanctioned, and then had to resort to prostitution because of it. And Amberwood totally dismisses this as if it's nothing. Listen. Zero hours contracts, you cannot, I mean, we're, if we're talking about zero hours contracts, do not bring in prostitution. That is a completely different element, and it's something that we're trying to do. That is the reality of we've, some of the people affected by the changes. We've had that conversation about it, and the fact is universal credit is designed to help people, and the fact that they can get advice. Right, okay, no it's not. I will tell you, and everybody, everybody watching this now who is on universal credit, who is... My heart goes out to them because I know the situation with Universal Credit. They are useless, absolutely useless. And it's not really the fault of the staff there. It's the way it's been implemented. It's a disaster. And people are killing themselves over it. And Amber Rudd is sitting there saying, don't bring prostitution into it. What sort of evil witch is she? Advance payments should allow them to be... I don't really understand why you're bringing prostitution. I don't understand why you're bringing in prostitution. If you sanction people when they don't accept a zero hours contract because they want the job security and you sanction them and they, they, they forced into prostitution, how can that not be brought up in an argument? Taking a zero hours contract Universal credit will nevertheless ensure them a stable and appropriate income via whatever the, uh, the scale rates for universal credit are. But for, some people, you, for some people, zero hours contracts work well. For very few people, actually, 
The, ma the vast majority of people would like a full-time job with full benefits. Just saying some people is not good enough. And they, well, you may have had that experience. Some people, not, not, it not does. the majority of people in, in, a, fact is, in a regular working environment. Yes, some but. people it does work well. She just said, that not the majority of people. She said, yes, but for some people it does. Well, how many people? Three? Four? I won't go on with it. I, I wanted to highlight just how much of an evil woman she is. She's evil. Zero hours contracts, and this is something that the, the Conservative government concentrates on massively when it comes to employment in this country. All they care about is the employment figure. That's it. That's the only thing that they care about. Whenever, you, whenever they're asked anything with regards to employment, all they care about is, hey, it's coming down. They'll cite this figure. UK unemployment at the lowest since 1975. But the thing is, that doesn't tell the whole story. Because how many of those people are literally just off the radar now? Are not working but off the radar? Are not collecting anything? Because believe me, there are thousands of those people. How many more millions of them are actually on zero hours contracts struggling at less than minimum wage? Because essentially, that's what they're getting if they're on zero hours contracts, unless they're working about 100, 120, 140 hours a week. But that's the whole point of them concentrating on that employment figure, and this is why it's wrong. And this is, why, uh, this is something I learned from the great Kyle Kolinsky. I learned this years ago when I first found his channel back at the end of, uh, end of 2016. He explained very succinctly how concentrating on, it's very easy to get 0% employment. It's easy. It's called slavery. And I mentioned the S word earlier in this. And essentially, that's what she's presiding over, I think. This is the Tories' version of legal slavery. They're trying to drive wages down as much as possible so they can compete in the global market and sell things in the neoliberal global market and compete with, I suppose, with the Chinese because she thinks, hey, we're going to stop in the EU. They all do. They all want to. Let's face it. They're just trying to implement slavery in the UK. That's what these zero hours contracts are. I had a, com a conversation a few days ago with my old postman, postwoman actually, but she said to her, she, I asked her why she left. She left as a postman and I know she loved her job because we actually know each other from school. And she said to me, well, well, it was privatized and I knew she left about six months after it was privatized. She said, when it was privatized, one of the first things they did was try and get everybody on zero hours contracts. The first, one of the first things they did, and they tried to push everybody on zero hours contracts and anybody who they refused, they, uh, who refused to do it and refused to take it, they made life extremely difficult to, uh, for them to the point where many of them just quit. Many of them were forced to go on zero hours contracts against their wishes and others, like my post lady, fought back and actually took them and got money out of them. I think, I'm not sure whether it was from a tribunal, whether it was um, unfair dismissal or constructive dismissal. I think it's more likely to be constructive. But they paid it happily to people who took them because they knew by taking, by moving everybody to zero hours contracts, how much money they would save by turning the Royal Mail into as near as damn it a slave trade as possible, or a slave job, a slavery, a job of a slave as possible. That's what they're doing as far as I'm concerned. Universal credit needs to be scrapped. Let's remember what the UN said just before Christmas, that we are almost like a third world country with the amount of poverty that we have got. One in five people in this country are, are in poverty are below the breadline. It's 2019. It shouldn't be that way. But I'm afraid, while we've got a Tory government, it's going to get much, much worse. And when it does, I'll be here shouting and screaming with my hair on fire as usual. I hope you'll join me. If you like this video and you want to see more, please subscribe and click the bell below. Independent media outlets like mine are being censored across all social media platforms, so please 
like, comment, and share. That really helps with, out with the algorithm that is biased against us now. We are supported by our audience. Most of us are in independent media. So if you can support me and you do enjoy my work, please subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. And every dollar helps for the, if just one, one in five of my subscribers donated a dollar, I'd be able to do this and not worry about funding. Thanks very much for your support. Until next time, peace and take care.